This is the Iahora Chrome M1 PS motorcycle style scooter. Oh yeah, which is my favorite electric ride. Now over the last month, I posted a couple shorts and it was apparent that you guys have a ton of questions about this, as you should, because you don't see these very often. And so that's what I wanna talk about in the review is I just wanna attempt to answer every possible question you guys have, will have, or ever have had. But before I do that, I wanna just walk around this and show you some of my favorite things. So what we have here is just a classic chopper style scooter. It is just one of the prettiest scooters I've seen. And uh, one of my favorite things about it is of course the color. This is called Green Apple. And I don't know if you can see that, but it sparkles. It makes this a very eye-catching vehicle. There's green up top, green below, and then green on the front fender. And then you got all this chrome in the fronts. Everything chromed out. Frame is all chrome. Underneath the battery, coming towards the very back and then under the saddle. You got chrome rims. They've got the motor in the back, so that is solid, but it's still chrome. And that contrast from green to chrome is just pretty. Woo! But my favorite part is the saddle. Just look at that. It's a synthetic leather. It goes down in the middle, so it gives you a snug fit. It actually feels pretty good, and I think they try to make it look like alligator skin. So green, chrome, and brown. Woo! The color scheme is fantastic, but I also just like how smooth the frame is. Comes out wide, comes back in narrow. Just sleek, smooth, and looks good. Okay, well, I'll dive into some more features and talk about performance in just a minute, but let's talk about a few of the questions now. And the first and most common one I got is if you have to have a motorcycle license, which you do not. So good news there. I don't have one and I'm riding it and I feel okay about that decision. Uh, the second one is, do you have to register it? And that is a yes. Usually that's only gonna cost you anywhere from 50 to a couple hundred dollars. The form that you need to register it comes in the box. The third most common question is, is it street legal? And yes, it is. Let me pull over to talk a little bit more about that question because I wanna show you all the lights, which seems to be one of the determining factors that makes a vehicle street legal or not. First off, here are the lights. So that's off, those are daytime running, and then full on lights. On the left side, you have low beams and high beams. Below that, you have turn signals. It displays on the screen. There's the front one and the rear. And it will keep on blinking until you reset it, which you just push it about a half an inch to the right. On the right side, above the headlight switch, you have hazards, both on in the front and in the back. And then you got a horn. <laughs> That's a cutesy little horn. Now, I don't know all the things that make a vehicle street legal, but I do know another one is how loud it is. That huge 4,000 watt motor is just silent. All right, this next question is probably the most common one. A lot of people wanna know how much this costs. And I'm a little bit hesitant to answer that question because it's a lot of money. There is good news though, that I'll get to in just a second. But this one, the Chrome M1 PS, it's going for around $6,200. That is a pretty penny. But if you do buy it, they ship it to your house. It takes about eight days to get there. And the only assembly you have to do is just add the front wheel and the handlebars. Now, the good news with the price is that if you want the same performance scooter, you can get the Knight M1 PS, which is the exact same scooter, but it costs around 1500 bucks less. Now it's time for the last question. And that is how fast can it go? Which is gonna depend on the speed modes. Let me stop for a second and show you how to change those. On the right side, got a mode button. You hit that. There's no beep to it, but there is a number on the screen that changes from one, two, and three. Speed one is topping out around 21. Speed two is topping out about 36, 37. And speed three is 49. There's 50. <laughs> All right, I got the big five zero. You're not gonna always hit 50 miles per hour. It really is gonna depend on how flat the road is. That stretch I just came down was slightly downhill. A couple minutes ago, I went up that and I could only get 40. From zero to 35, you got a lot of torque, but 35 to 50, how fast you go depends on how flat the road is. There's a cool feature I wanna talk about before I head back on the road, and that is the park feature. So there's a P displayed on the screen, and that's nice because it kills the throttle. You have to squeeze the brake lever for it to go out of park mode. And there you go, and now we got juice. Another safety feature I like is, why did you do that? It's a good reminder to put your kickstand down on the way before you let go of the scooter. Is if the kickstand's down, that also kills your throttle. And you can hear that beeping. That tells you, hey dummy, Put the kickstand up. Huh, check that out. The gas light is blinking. <laughs> That's cool. With the low fuel uh, light blinking, it seems appropriate to talk about range. They say it's got a range rating from 38 to like 74 miles. And you got a huge battery. It's a 72 volt, 40 amp hour battery. Yeah. Iahora has rated that battery up to 500 times, meaning that you can charge it 
500 times. And I want to show you where this battery is located, which is right here. I guess that's the only place it would be. But you can take this cover off with the key, pop this in, turn it. Then you got to give it a push back. There we go, pop it off. And then here's the kill switch as well. You can unplug this, just move that out, pull this out. Then it has a sturdy handle, so you can just pop that right out. Ah, and there we go. There's this battery. That thing is huge. Now they do give you a smart charger that shuts off automatically once it's fully charged. That is the biggest charge port I've ever seen. Now with that key that I just used to take the battery case off, it's the same key that you use to start the scooter. Now I want to talk about comfort. And as far as riding posture, it's pretty awesome. You got ape hanger handlebars, so your hands are level with your shoulders. I don't know, I just think it's pretty comfortable. And you got full suspension. There's motorcycle style in the front. Pretty cushy. Got some nice travel. I haven't bottomed out. But then check out all the suspension in the rear. The first is the saddle suspension. But then you got dual spring underneath the dual spring. And it's actually pretty cushy. <laughs> Bio Hora has given this a rider size of 5'2 up to 6'2. And then a rider size of up to 440 pounds. Whew. That's a lot of weight. I want to go back to power for just a second and talk about that more because the torque this has, which is 170 Newton meters, makes this a very fast scooter off the line. Here we go. Oh, take it out of park mode. Here we go. Woo. And it's got some tremendous power for climbing. It's hard to tell, but I'm going up a 20% grade up this canyon. I've got one battery bar showing and it is just hauling butt up it. Oh man. And there you go. There's the... End result of that hill is down there quite a ways. So you got a lot of power for hills. Now coming back down, I'm gonna test out the brakes. You got hydraulic motorcycle style brakes with big old beefy brake levers. Next to each brake lever are these reservoirs. Of course, if you hit the brake lever, the tail light flares up. Woo. And you need some nice hydraulic brakes because there's a lot of weight to stop. This alone weighs 187 pounds. And then my weight of 180, that's like 200 or something like that. more things I want to talk about before I end the review. The first one is these foot pegs. They fold in. This speaker is an accessory that is pretty easy to install. I did a short on how to do that. If you want to check that out, I'll have that in the description. Oh, and then here's the control pad for the speaker. It's Bluetooth, so you can connect it to your phone. You can put a license plate on it if you want. Tires are different sizes. You got a fat tire in the rear and then a skinnier one in the front. And then the last thing is the discount code. I'll have it in the description, which will save you a couple hundred bucks if you decide to pick one of these up. Well, that wraps up the Chrome M1 PS. I'm curious to know what you guys think of it. Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know. If you want to pick it up, I've got a link in the description and then I'll have the Knight M1 PS up here somewhere if you want to check that out. And that's it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.